I am unashamed. What about you? So yesterday was our best day thus far. This is what, day four or five in the duck season? Day four. But we missed Sunday because Phil was preaching, I was speaking. We had Sadie's wedding coming up, which was last night. Quite the soiree. I oh, know. yeah. So we missed Sunday, which we only usually hunt on Sunday afternoons, but our afternoon hole is just now getting water. So we, we took Sunday off. And guess what? They say the ducks were everywhere on Sunday, you know. So, <laughs> of course. I call those the devil's that's ducks. De- that's devil ducks. Temptation. You <clears throat> but yesterday, we actually had a pretty good hunt. We only shot 10. We should have had a few more, but the men in between me and phil they didn't they didn't shoot very well you know we had a bunch of gabbles come in about and by the way i wasn't there so he's not talking about me 10 or 12 although i'm not a great shot so it could hey at least you're honest you're I'm the honest. only person i'm the only person that says i missed three smooth yeah. times you know we had 10 or 12 gabbles come by of course there was no wind at the time it was tough and they circled 30 times left and then came back and i thought if they get within 50 i'm shooting them because they they've had 30 opportunities to come in they won't come in which one of one of phil's guests he was a what we call a rubbernecker he even though he was painted and had a little bit you know a little facial hair for brush he he wanted to watch and we have a shooting porch and then we have a roof well he was him and si because si thinks he's invisible yeah they get up and because the, they want to watch. Now, si, to Sai's si's credit, at least he doesn't move He's a still, whole lot. But yeah. this guy, he was moving a lot. So they got within 50. I raised up, missed the first shot. Because whoever's shooting on the end, they have an easier time, vantage point, because they're like saying cut them as they're getting up. Everyone else is surprised. It has to react. Well, I missed my first shot, so I doubled my lead, and my second shot just one folded. Of course, now they're 60. My third shot's probably 70, which I'm shooting an extra full choke. It folded, started coming down. Of course, they were kind of on my side. Phil was on the other end. He was kind of out just because he didn't have a good vantage point. So I, I thought, well, I got two. I did. I wasn't saying I got two like I'm bragging. I was thinking, I got two. How many do we have? Because I brought my dog yesterday. It was his first official duck hunt. So I was wanting to know, all right, where do I send my dog? Which was pretty much the whole topic of the morning because Phil and I have had this running deal about he has the greatest dog ever, but it has an asterisk. His dog, Blue, the asterisk is he has terrible manners. He whines and yelps. Like when you blow a duck call, he's well it kind of defeats the purpose of blowing a duck call so anyway i said well how many we get turned out we got two gadwalls it it relates my animal in this case but uh a quarrelsome woman is like a constant dripping why why do you keep comparing the women (laughs) and the dogs i i I don't that is not better better a little space on the roof than and then in being inside the house with a quarrelsome woman. I, mean, I know your heart is good, and you love all people, and you love all animals. What, but what it's just the writers a bad, of the Bible said it's a bad comparison. But so my it, dog is like a constant dripping because he's <coughs> moaning. I've got earplugs in that enhances my hearing, which makes the moaning sound three times as loud as it normally and is. And he's closest to you, and anyway. he's closest to me. He he's all excited about duck hunting, but he, he, he today was his first day, and he, he was I got his him first on a day. Prozac yeah. regiment. Yeah, we talked Somebody about said that, that would work, so I got him on Prozac. Didn't his work. His tail, the speed of his tail bumping on the blind, used to be bump 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 bump. Pretty fast tail wag. He's wagging his tail. He's a dog. He's excited. So that's how a dog shows excitement. He right. wags his tail. But in this case. The Prozac regiment, it's slightly slower. Bump, 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 instead of bump, 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 bump. But either way, it scares ducks. <laughs> yeah. But what are you going to so do? You can tell, I, no, no. you can that. tell no, by Phil's that. demeanor. I just couldn't cut my dog's tail off because he's, he's excited. I just couldn't no. do it. Sentimental. 
Which would be up. Some dogs, they do that too. Yeah. Which yeah. It was something I looked into, but it is. That's a bit barbaric at this stage. So you can tell my dog, look, he had never been there before. He was a little weird at first. And yours is a he, yellow lab? He's a yellow lab. Yeah. Uh, his name is Biggin. But I'll have to say, once he kind of got acclimated, he was pretty impressive. He did really well, especially for his first time, which I mean, because in, in dog training, you got to take him at least 20 to 30 times before they kind of get the gist of it. I understand what you're doing and what but, their role is. But everybody, you know, at first feels like my dog's better. He would have done it quicker because I get it. It feels, you know, we got a competition going here. Yeah. But then Phil said, you know what? Because we, we got five mallards in, killed them all, and they were scattered in every direction. And the dog just like a machine, hand signals, whistle blowing. He got every one. He was getting one. more efficient as yeah. time as progressed with that. each and with each duck shot. Right. So Phil said, "Well, this dog might make one." And I leaned over to Jay and I said, "That means this dog is doing awesome." <laughs> <laughs> that was classic dad under understatement. So I Someone got. Someone says, "Why do you use them?" We use them because they save you time. It's better that they get wet and cold than mm-hmm. you walking out there, stumbling, falling with your waders, water in your waders, first yeah. one thing or another, and, and the wind's blowing and the ducks are leaving in a hurry. Well, a good dog is a pretty handy thing to have. Oh, they're handy. It's, he's a Labrador retriever. And they're well, fun to watch. Some department in yeah. salt water. So they're fun to watch. they dogs that retrieve ducks. Well, and they become your – yeah. Salt they, water's part. They <laughs> become part of the team. I mean, I yeah. you know, you consider – he's – where dogs specialize is their nose. Right. Because, like, when I'm a pretty good down bird getter, but I, I – you know, I can't use my nose. I, don't, I, I lose sight of him. It's yeah, over, but right. he's he picks up at scent, and so they bring they bring something to the you table. Know, when God made the the animal kingdom, you just think of the dogs that herd sheep, and the dogs that like the one that chasing the terrorists down through the tunnel. I mean, oh yeah, the they, German they, shepherds. Then, yeah, they they retrieve ducks for us, mm-hmm. and a lot of them point quails, bird yeah. dogs, or, or whatever. You just add up all the skill sets that the animal world has, dogs especially. It's pretty impressive. Well, it's funny because we would say, going back, you know, if you said, if you just. I ingest. Today. If, salt water did that. I know. I, I picked that up. I'm sure the audience did too. <laughs> so, if I don't clarify it, somebody, oh, he's for salt. we said salt water made dogs. I'm sure they got that tongue in cheek. So we would say that's why a dog is man's best friend, right? Sure. He's helping us eat. He's helping us, you know, hunt. He's helping us in every. But it's blind funny. People, most people. Blind people the, that's lost their sight, whatever. They have a, you know, the see, oh, yeah. see an animal. You, you're saying, what a what a skill set oh, yeah. for an animal to do that. Well, well plus, my, well, when my daughter had all those surgeries, they recommended, they said, you know, get her a comfort dog. You know, I was like, do what? They're like, I'm telling you. And so we did. One of the greatest things ever. It's a, sure. it's a distraction. And it's like the dog can almost sense that when it's time to, she just had surgery and she's real protective. You so know, our so. pal, Kevin Neiman, who's a counselor, was here now he's up in Tulsa you know he had a dog named Bailey a female black lab and she you know he took she was in the counseling session with him so he said you know he's sitting there and he's counseling with a person or a couple you know and somebody starts crying or they're getting mad you know because you're dealing you know how counseling is and that dog will come over as soon as the emotion rises the dog gets up off her bed and she walks over to that where this person is and she just stands there or sits down next to him. and this person and it, it immediately brings a calming effect mm-hmm. into the session and and Kevin said you know without them even realizing it they start reaching down patting the dog and you just watch the emotion go back down again and so she's like assisting him in working yeah. with people having trouble so it's I amazing with that. that yeah yeah that's why a lot of people you know, people probably find it fascinating we're talking about this because like well you're hunting animals and shooting them but you know we're we're also getting the idea that, you know, in the order of things, Romans chapter one, various other verses, you have God, humans, you know, and, and animals. And it's fine. I mean, I got, there's 30 tame ducks behind my house, you know, but I mean, push came to shove. If I got hungry, well, there'd be 29. I but, saw some you know, people. I, I, I don't mind enjoying them either. You know, I saw some people on social media that were like, why would they send that dog in there? Talking about the famous dog that was that Trump had the other day. 
And but I was like, because it's a dog. I mean, like he's awesome. He did great. He yep. he got the bad guy. But the reason yeah. he's in the dog in before the guy is because he, he's a dog. And, you know, and, and, and not a guy. Work. It's better that they're expendable. Well, that's exactly right. But but being. people don't. No, I mean, man, no. they, they they get upset. So to circle them. back to my story. So then three mallards come in, and uh, well, it was five. <laughs> And I raise up left to right. Now, I got to jump on everybody because they came off Phil's corner. And I went, bump, bump, bump. Now, everybody's shooting. So, I wasn't claiming, but it just looked like the three that I shot at in a line (laughs) (laughs) instantly folded when I pulled the trigger. Well, the last one was out there, probably 60 yards. And so, I said, boys, I cut that last one at 80, which was really 60 and but he's shooting a 20 gauge. He's shooting a 20 gauge open pop bore. gun, yeah. op, open bore. And so everybody's looking because Jay's looking at me because the duck, now, regardless of who shot him, the duck like folded as in a lot of force hit the duck and it just, and so everybody knows that a 20 gauge pop gun is not capable of rendering that duck <laughs> that, yeah. dead on impact. Five different people. Saying in their mind, I got that one. Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> you, how, how do you know? Sometimes well, you can replay the video and say, you know, somebody's pointing wheel over there somewhere yeah. or another shooting up in the air, and you said, no, it wasn't you that got that. All right, so this is one of our uh, favorite times of the month when we get our TAC Pack monthly subscription box. It's basically military, tactical, Second Amendment type stuff. We love that. And you never know what it is, You right? never know what it is. So it's like Christmas every month. Let's uh, see what we got in here. Okay. What, what do we got, got there, Jace? I don't know. Tack That's belt. the fun of it. Yeah, tack belt. Tack belt. Pretty good. What you got there, Dad? Made in America. This is, uh, boy, multi-tool. Tools. Break that out. Let Multi-tool. Look at Ooh, that's got all kinds. Of, yeah. I see a screwdriver on the end. Screw Looks like a bottle opener. The belt a here. universal wrench, heavy-duty socket, a bottle opener, a package opener, a metric and imperial rulers, a elastomer insert. I don't know what that is. Magnetic retention. <laughs> uh, but it's pretty well... Get everything you need. I mean, you know. Oh, that's a mag loader, Jace. It's just mag a good little loader. tube for duck okay. hunters, Jace. So you got good, pretty good too. So it's a multi tool. Uh, we've got um, they they put in there their sticker, which is priceless. They say your tack belt. So you also got a mag loader there for your pistol. So look, every month, basically, you get a hundred dollars worth of stuff, and um, at least sometimes it's more than that. Sometimes they got AR 15 parts. You got knives, you got cleaning kits. We've got a lot of different stuff uh, that we put to use in our duck blinds. So you got a January pack that's coming up. It's going to kick off the new year. Uh, they're going to have some great EDC and AR parts, a mixed pack in there. Uh, they're teaming up with Hogue for some really cool stuff in the future. Uh, February pack is going to have $200 worth of stuff. So basically you get a lot of free, cool stuff and free stuff that then you get to, Open up your Christmas. Party. I was looking for my tools yesterday, and the battery went dead in the in the mud motor, and the gas hose broke. But that two there would have got me and Dev could have could have fixed me right up. I had right. to go get my toolbox to come down in. Mm-hmm. But that one tool there could have got me we going. Solved it. See, that's the, the the folks at Tack Pack. They know. So you go to Tack Pack T A C P A C K dot com. Use the promo code Phil at checkout. So they're going to send you this free mystery bag of tactical goodies. Uh, so it's going to ship out the same time your first tack pack. So you're going to get a free package up front as well as your regular monthly. If you missed out on December, uh, let them know, info at tackpack.com. Uh, they'll send you some of whatever they have left if they still have some. Tackpack.com. Yep. Offer code is Phil when you check out and uh, get signed up and get started. I got this ready for you. Look at there. Phillips said. Mm-hmm. Flathead. Mm-hmm. I like it. Easy. Yesterday, I, I needed one of those. See? There you go. And it was here. We just hadn't opened it yet. Now you got it, Phil. You take it with you. Tackpack.com. Offer code Phil. Sign up today. Size famous answer to that is, hey, boys, 
You clean that duck and you'll when and you cut into him, you'll find out it's twenty gauge yeah. oh, number four. He told four. that story yesterday, and the math was not at it. He's like, you know, <laughs> we went back, you know, me and Phil, and we killed eighty ducks. Which back then, you know, you could the point system, you could kill more ducks. Right? So, uh, what about the question? <laughs> some of our listeners, Phil, you gonna let me tell this story? <laughs> yeah, I'm Phil, you, done, you done told no. like twenty minutes worth. <laughs> Phil, I mean, size it. He'd pick up the duck, and he was looking. He'd say sixteen gauge. 16 because yeah, he oh, was yeah. shooting a 16 gauge you know and so he said when it was all over it was 65 to 5 <laughs> i was like well i thought there were 80 ducks huh? and he's like no 65 to 5 <laughs> i was like sorry your story's not that no <laughs> it's classic sir um so what we're talking about what we've been talking about is uh because dad's ready to roll so we're going to jump in well he's it, excited because we're talking about jesus that's today, exactly right he gets fired up causes about excitement so where where we've been and sort of you know the the thirty thousand foot view is we've been kind of looking at the Old Testament and sort of how as we walk through you know the history of Israel it's really been everything's been pointing towards what's coming when Jesus came and yeah. we and we left off with the first kings you know we st- we talked about Saul and as yes, he kind of gets cranking so let me give you a little bit of background then we're going to jump into where we're talking about today so Israel as a nation basically had 39 kings, and almost all of them were bad. Uh, I didn't look back, but I think it's maybe six were considered to be, quote, unquote, and nobody's perfect, but, I mean, good kings in the sense they weren't evil. Most of the time when you read about a king in Israel, uh, it says he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, you know, and it's just, and then it talks about it's kind of like Christianity. Everybody has sin. That's right. But your heart is what's, you know. The driving force. I guess that's a good way to look at it. So basically, six out of 39 had a good heart, yeah. which is not good percentages in terms of leadership. But that's what they were. But even David, they focus on that. They're like, well, he was a murderer and an adulterer, but he was also a man after God's own heart. That's right. a different. We get hung up on the sin because right. we can't really see the heart. Right. So and, well, that's a great point. So his we're, walk, his walk, his walk. Proved he was a guy. Well, and his response to sin. I mean, I was I was having a conversation with my daughter not too long ago, and she was like, "I don't understand why we share all our faults. Why? Because like we were, I was studying with some of her friends, and I was like pointing at her as like, you know, just throwing it out like common knowledge. And she was like, "I mean, that's embarrassing. Why? Why do we share our faults?" And I said, "Because we." I quoted the John three. You know, I said we want to display that the transformation that happens in us is God's transformation that he, he takes our sin and he forgives us so we can be open. We confess our sin. We're honest. It's called living in the light contrasted to being in darkness where you try to hide. And you think about sinful life, it, the cover up is always worse because right. it breeds to lying. And how do you know if anybody's ever telling the truth? You know? So the, so the era of the monarchy and the Kings, um, a lot happened, and this is a ton of history that we're just going to talk about in a couple of minutes to sort of bridge the gap. But basically, the the nation itself split into two uh, under Rehoboam, which was Solomon's son. So you basically had Saul, David, Solomon. You had a united kingdom, twelve tribes, just what we read about. You know, basically God gave it to them. They could they could hold it for three kings, and then the split begins, which shows you the nature of mankind. And what do you think God's plan was for this? This shadow to what? What do you mean? Well, I meant like people that yeah, read that, they, they're like, well, why is this even in the Bible? I was just wondering what you would, well, how you would say it. Because yeah. I think it's just what I just said. I, I think it shows you when it comes to human nature and rulership, when you're always going to fall short and fail. Every time you read about in the Old Testament, they would take their eyes off of God put it on either a leader or an idol or, you know, we're going to do it this way. We're going to, we're going to be like the people of Canaan. And and so they went out and basically bowed down to these Asherah poles and had all this sexual immorality to try to somehow produce crops and all this. And God was like, God is infallible. Yeah. And yeah. We're not. And we're not. Well, so, right. That's what I was getting. To. I was of, thinking of all the kingdoms, thinking about all the wars and, and we always think in a physical way. If you set the precedent, because what happens is the greatest king on earth at a certain time, he's susceptible to flaws, making the errors in judgment, which takes his kingdom, you know, to look at him in a negative light. 
or to death. I mean, that's the main one. They're like, kill the king, and somebody else rises up. Well, you know, Jesus is eventually going to come. Those two factors, you think about it, he had no flaws. He never made a mistake. He didn't give in to right. temptation that would distraction or would – from a political view would make him not desirable. And then he was indestructible. Well, that, okay. You're the king of Kings. If you have those two things <laughs> going for you, which is why I think you read all that is so depressing. And it's so much mirrors our history in all, not just Israel, but in mm-hmm. all of life, whoever has we've the killed him. Day. So we're done with him. Three days later, he's up out of the grave and you say, uh, even his enemies said, you're not going to get him. Right. You, 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 you're not going to get him. Right. He's, and, but he's it, beyond. It's also, it's, it's, it's important as to your point, which is a good one, as to why you would even study this um, in the Old Testament because, man, it's easy to get bogged down in the history of it. But yeah. when you think about it, the kingdom splits. you got ten tribes up north and you got two down south. And that those little two, they're called Judah now, and you got North Israel. And what happens is you got all this false worship that goes on because they're they don't have the temple. So they're not able to do what God told them to do. They can't go down to Jerusalem and worship. We're our own nation now. Yeah. All that matters because when we start, in which we're going to look at some of the gospels, and when you look in there contextually, that's very important to know the history of the region. Because when Jesus goes up and, you know, there's this woman at the well, you know, he's in Samaria. That's an area that had been, you know, taken away for 700 years. They didn't even know who God was. I mean, she went all the way back to Jacob when we get there. But so it's important to know a little bit of background about what was going on in the Gospels. Well, well, just, you know, they don't know. You and know? when I went to Israel, you know, was that two years ago, I guess? Uh, that's why all that history that. You know, sometimes when you get bogged down, it seems a little boring. Right. But when you're looking around at the places you read about, it it does something to you. It, it, it number one, you think, how did these guys? They got it all right here. But two, you just look at it from a bigger picture. I noticed Willie. Have you noticed? It? He just got back from it. Oh yeah. He's just on cloud <laughs> now. You know, if you look at it out, it was in fact big time. Mentioned the woman at the well entrenched. Of racism, oh yeah, I mean, they 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 you know. Oh, they weren't even allowed to speak to each oh, other. No. Right. And the reason why is because they they saw them as less than pure, because they weren't the chosen little two down there at the bottom. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So it was like, oh, those people have been under you know foreign rule. We could learn a valuable lesson from that. Well, we were outside of them because we were Gentiles. You talked about this before. By the way, a lot of people say, <clears throat> well, every time I read the Old Testament, there's so many warring factions and so much slaughter going on at all the time all the time throughout the entire old testament what they forget is uh two thousand years later when jesus finally shows up the prediction being made jesus is coming genesis all the way to malachi and all the wars and the ups and downs of the Mm -hmm. jewish nation and what you're talking about the various kings Nothing has changed at all about humanity and wars. No. They're, they're, we're still at each other worldwide, right. just like they were, with far less people. But the, right. war, the warring tribes were still there. The racism was there. Yep. And it only it's only done away with when everyone bows to God and puts their faith in Jesus, the that's ones right. that's indestructible. And all the, uh, all the other gods, you know, there's still that going on today. So you see all these things that are battled out. So the thread that I want to pull on today for us is when we get to David, who is the second king, you know, in Israel, but he's actually God's chosen because God knew Saul was not going to work out. It's, you know, it's interesting when you read the Old Testament from the perspective of we get to get the insight because we knew what God was thinking, and He was like, "This guy's not going to work," because <laughs> you picked him for the wrong reasons, you know. So He had His guy, which is interesting because you just mentioned that about David. David had a lot of flaws, like we all do, but that heart was consistent toward God. And you read Psalm fifty-one, which, by the way, to me is one of the greatest psalms out of all of them. It is a person who is just pouring out. Of what a mess I've made of my life. Yeah. Nearly every story, uh, and all the characters, and all the ones in the Hall of Faith, the Bible goes into 
uh, to make sure it usually points out their flaws and right. their mistakes. Right. Just about every one of them. That's, That's right. why I brought that up on those two qualities. The passage I was thinking about, because we asserted our view that we believe once the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts 2, and Peter, who had made that confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, when he shared and introduced Jesus and why he died and how he was raised, when the people heard that, we believe right there in that moment, the kingdom of, of God was formed on the earth because people who repented and were baptized for forgiveness of sins, they then received the Holy Spirit, which was heaven, an, a heavenly quality, God's deity which had what, never been available. Who had never been yeah. available? The Spirit. Right. Well, the Spirit Throughout. had come on people, but not necessarily in people. I mean, now, now you have the kingdom of heaven. You know, Peter at the gates. You know, as they say, the the gate was. I went over and visited. You know, he he by that sermon, those people that responded, they were baptized. You know, the kingdom we say is here. And so now the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world because weapons of the world take down the king or accuse the king. That's basically right. the two two areas. Bloodshed. Yeah. And uh but I'm getting that from one of my favorite passages in the Bible is first Timothy six. I'd like to read it. It Paul was charged in Timothy because of the opposition and persecution he was getting. He tells him in verse 12, he says, fight the good fight of the faith, which he's not talking about, you know, with a stick or a, or a weapon. It's a spiritual warfare. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession, which is the same confession Peter made. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He is the king of kings. In the presence of many witnesses, in the sight of God who gives life to everything, which is something we frequently talk about on this podcast, he is life. Mm -hmm. And of Christ Jesus, and this is what we talked about in an earlier podcast, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. You know, I believe that's when he asked him if he was a king. You know, and he's like, hey, I'm not even from this place. But you're right, I am a king. I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. And then he makes this statement, which is full of why we put our faith in Jesus. God, the blessed and only ruler, the king of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see to him be honor and might forever i mean what what a that that that's our battle cry that's who we follow and serve through faith right and it's interesting because when you read uh, hebrews 11 and 12 as we've done frequently on the podcast <clears throat> you'll see as jay said the when peter comes along the the aspects of the kingdom have always been there but that's they went public when jesus was raised and left and then sent the Holy Spirit down. The kingdom yeah. went public. Because so you read in Hebrews 12, he says, you've come to Mount Zion, you've come to a heavenly Jerusalem, you've come to angels in joyful assembly, you've come to those who have been made perfect, you've come to the church of the firstborn. He lays out all those elements of the kingdom. And what's interesting is all those people that live in the Old Testament, they didn't realize the kingdom was near then. Faith, response to God, but they were just living under that system and they couldn't see it. And so Jesus comes along and they think, well, where is it? Are you going to restore Israel? Remember the last questions is that they still were missing it right up until the moment when it was unveiled. They kept thinking it was a physical kingdom. That's right. It's hard for that's people to say that. That's why the book of Revelation. Because it had been a physical kingdom. That's right. Up until that point. I know we'll get kings. to Revelation one day, but that's why it's really more about celebrating those who have given their life in that's a right. physical way. In Jesus. I mean, that's what it's about. Because you think about all these main characters. I, I studied with a guy one time who, you know, I was asking probing questions. Have you ever had a religious experience? He's the one that wanted to study. But he was like, well, I never can get by from the fact, because when I read all the historical accounts of all these men, they all died horrible deaths. Why? I mean, if there's a God, why? It was kind of the argument of why do bad things happen, happen to, to you know to yeah. good people, and I was like, we don't understand the fight we're in. You don't take threats as of 
we're going to kill you if you keep following Jesus. And I've always said it's the, one of the greatest evidences that there is a God. Because if all these Peter and Paul and, you know, Silas, you name them all, who, who died, you know, rough deaths. Yeah. If they really hadn't seen Jesus raised from the dead, why in the world would they say, yeah, go ahead and kill me? So, Dad, there's an interest. You wouldn't know this probably, but there's an interesting phenomenon that's going on because, you know, people when they shop for Christmas used to is all go to the go to the store, you buy your stuff for Christmas, and you know you come home, you wrap up your packages. Now, I've never I've never participated. Right, in that. so you wouldn't even know about. Or this. you just make stuff, or you know, wrap up an apple. Remember, Granny, she used to do that. Yeah, and I guess that's a past era. Uh, yeah. So today. People go online, and my wife is a is one of the biggest out there. Which is an internet, and they encounter. and they shop on the internet, and so the stuff ships to your house. Now during the Christmas season, my house looks like a FedEx shipping department. There's so many boxes underneath my carport because Lisa loves to because they order online. Order online, it shows it's really the, easy. So they're ordering via their cell phone. That's right. Yeah. Or the computer, huh. correct. You can which actually I, which order. Which I don't your, have. Which you don't have. You, you can yeah. actually order your groceries online now. That's right. And they'll, they'll really deliver, they'll, and they'll bring deliver. them to you. Yeah, for seven bucks. But Dan, the eunuch does such a great job at grocery shopping. And Most well, of us pal, don't have a eunuch. Just so, play along for yeah. funsies. Either so, have a cell phone or a butler. <laughs> exactly. There you go. We've All gone right, so with the butler. For everybody else, the packages show up. Here's the problem. Here's here's a new thing that's developed. You got these packages that you know underneath your front porch, underneath your carport. Thieves come along because burglars and steal big, your stuff, and they steal your stuff. They're they're taking your Christmas presents. They aren't taking them out from under the tree. Not, not I, down in here. Yeah, not down in here. So they're following the the delivery truck. They're following the delivery truck. So our friends at Simply Safe uh, have provided home security and mainly camera systems that protect. You got to be able to look at these people. What happens is they come up and look. If they don't see any cameras, but they see some packages, guess what? They call them porch pirates. They're going to come and take your Christmas. And what you know. they see here is is animals coming their way, <laughs> baring their teeth. Yes. First line of defense. That's right. Behind that, I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> yeah. If you get we, past the dogs, we got it. So for the rest of us who don't have Dad's defense system, we need Simply Safe. We've got it. Uh, it's basically there to protect our, our goods, our products, stuff inside our houses. You, you have this out? I have it. I have it. Got cameras. In our culture, look, the people now, the criminals, they're more scared of a camera than they are a gun or a dog, huh. in your case. Or you know. Because once they know they're going down, if you if you catch them on camera. It's like coming here, you've been filmed five times before well, you even get you to You've got here. cameras too, that's right. So sure. here's what you do. Go to simplysave.com slash unashamed simplysave.com slash unashamed. You can take advantage of some holiday savings. You get a free HD security camera, which is awesome. I mean, that way you see it up close and personal. People try to hide their face. You get a good look at them. Uh, this is this offers for a limited time only, so you got to sign up soon. Simplysafe.com slash unashamed. Save big, get your free camera, and protect your Christmas. All right. It defies a lot. Not all of them would do that. They would say, okay, wait a minute. We made this up. It was a story. <laughs> Somebody would have come forward. <laughs> Somebody, at least one, but none of them did. And I, 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 we've seen the same thing in our modern culture, but nobody really understands. You remember that girl at Columbine High School and the guy was, the, he was killing, you know, teenagers. And he was stick his head in the room and says, there any Christians in here? Well, you know. That was weeding out people raising their hands because they were putting two and two together. But there was a girl there who said, yeah, she stood up, and he killed her. But And people said, well, why in the world? Because people of faith like us and her, we would rather die than deny. Than deny. Because I, yeah. I know if, if this is going to be real to me, and this is really in my own faith when I was a teenager. This is when I got really bold. Because yeah. the persecutions that I was undergoing, I thought, what are they going to do to me? Worst thing they're going to do is kill me, and I know I'm going to live forever. So I'm not taking any lip off some guy who has no clue on how we got here, what we're doing here. Here's, what they, here's what they miss. Jesus has been resurrected. <clears throat> Peter had deserted him. Deserted, along with the rest of them. He said, he said, Peter, the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, uh, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. He's talking to a commercial fisherman who he had chosen as one of his disciples, but when the heat came. Who had denied him three who times. Who had denied him, and he, his life became endangered. He hit the road. You say, well, he's out with beyond return because anybody who runs out on Jesus blows it big time. <laughs> you're out. Well, uh, when you were younger, Jesus talking to him, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. You got a rough deal coming up there, son. Watch. <laughs> Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death which Peter would glorify God. If you zero in on that, and Peter who was spoke in Acts chapter 2, 30 years later, he writes two little letters, second, first and second Peter. And in that second Peter, he brings that, that moment up. He said, I'll always remind you of these things. These things are add to your, uh, add to your faith, goodness to goodness, knowledge to knowledge, self-control to perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, but love. He said, you do that. He said, you'll never fall. Then he says, uh, I'll remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it's right to refresh your memory. Listen, as long as I live in the tent of the body, because I know that I will soon put it aside. You say, put what aside? His body, his tent. As our Lord Jesus Christ had made clear to me, he went back to when Jesus said, Peter, one of the, you're young now, and you can go where you want to go. He said, but there will come a time when when someone else, will, you'll stretch out your hands, and they're the ones that going to lead you where you don't want to go. He said, you're going to die a tough death, son. Now watch. So Peter just said, uh, I'll make every effort to see that after my departure, when he dies, he's looking at his death as a departure Far from lights out, that was brutal. I can't believe God will let one of his own mm -hmm. disciples die that kind of day. It's all about Jesus and the resurrection and you not going anywhere except to be with God. You just leave your tent. He, he called it a departure. It makes me feel a lot better there, Jace, when God tells me that physical death you are just departing your body. Oh, yeah. And when Jesus comes back, you'll even get that back in a glorified form. So if you look at physical death, he's conquered it for well, us. Look, and to prove your point, what's the one thing that changed from the Peter in the courtyard who was fearful about what was going to happen to his leader versus the one on the riverbank there you mentioned on the – on the bank of the, he looked and saw him. He saw a resurrected. And when he, he knew saw he that, he said, <laughs> we've got this thing here now. That's right. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden, then he's like, yeah, whatever. Woo, in fact, he's the one I ran out on. Who bad move. You that's know? exactly right. Well, wasn't, but, a, wasn't it the illustration where the, the person came up there and said, what if a person is married seven times, you know, at the resurrection, who, who will, you know, be as husband and wife, which Jesus made that question just look like in between the lines. He's like, what an, idiot for asking that question <laughs> but it's something i've thought about you know how how old will we be you know because yeah. we're humans we tend will to babies be grown you know you yeah, ask yeah i mean questions. it's like it's like at the wedding last night when sadie made that reference <laughs> about well how is jesus you know gonna gonna come won't we burn up by the sun when she was a kid she said that and then she's like oh never mind he's probably gonna come at night to get around from us like being scorched on our way up by the sun. But at the end of that, he said, you know, you're ignorant. You don't know the power of God, which is the number one thing that he is life. I mean, it's impossible. That's when in Acts two, it was impossible for Jesus to stay dead because he he's, he's God. He, he can't die. Right. And so when you start really believing that, well, it's like when, when unfortunate things happen, kids die or whatever, and we've all had those tough conversations and trying to deal with people, and we're like, it's 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 fine. They, 
look, I'm telling you, death is not a problem. It seems tragic, and we mourn because we're going to miss them, and this is difficult. It is not a problem. I mean, it is 100% it's not, lights out. not a problem. It's, it's not lights out. It's not nope. a problem. But he goes on to say in that, that parable, I guess you would call that a parable. It was a story. He said, you know, with God, all are alive. Yeah. It, because he he's is not the God life. of the dead, That's but what of, the of the living. And he was talking to, about individuals, you know, Moses, yeah. you know, the burning right. bush. But he makes that statement after that because he says, because to God, all are alive. I just thought that was an interesting. He controls life. Abraham, Isaac, I mean, and Jacob, he was saying, they're still here. Right. That's why the transfiguration, you looked up, he said, All what right. in the world is he talking to Moses and Elijah? I thought they were long gone. No. Humans yeah. just have a hard time when it comes to their death, acknowledging that Jesus was dead and he came back to life. But all this transformation that with Jesus' followers who eventually became martyrs, you just think if you saw a guy that was dead, you were 100% sure, not 99, you were 100% sure he was dead. Then he comes back. And talks to you and says, look, I want you to go be my witnesses. You know, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit to help you. Well, you've become the most dangerous person on the planet, which is going back to the kingdom being here and the king of kings. You cannot kill us. You think you're going to kill us. Oh, no, we're not going anywhere. We'll be back sooner or later. No fear of death. <laughs> no, it's, it's an amazing thing. So what happens through that is you become – where persecution doesn't bother you as much. By right? the way, someone would say to us, you say, well, would Jesus have to appear to you to convince you that there is a resurrection of the dead? Would he have to appear to you, Phil, in person, standing there saying, keep the faith, and then he disappeared? Well, I'm like, would it change what he did, his death, burial, and resurrection, if he appeared to me every 15 minutes? I already believe it. Right. So he said, well, if he appeared to you, that would that would cinch the deal. I said, the deal is already cinched because if he appeared to me and I started running across America saying, y'all not going to believe this, but I saw Jesus and he told me to keep the faith, it would cost me more trouble than it's worth <laughs> it's because I already believe it. And this story, even if it yeah, was Yeah, you wouldn't truth, believe it more. <laughs> no. That, that's, that's me. That's what people have a hard time understanding that. You either believe it or you don't. Oh, I believe it. Right. So it totally. affects my life. I know? just read what these guys said, and I'm my first reaction when you read through the Bible and you start reading about the resurrection of the dead, you're like, how in the world did these prophets do all this predicting that would happen? Right. He And all the guys said, boy, we fixed to tell us a humdinger of a lie here. We're all going to get together, and we're going to tell the lie even to the point of death. We'll die for this lie we're telling. Right. They wouldn't have done it. Well, to your point, the verse, the last verse in the book of John, which John is my favorite gospel, right after this conversation he has with Peter about feed my sheep, do you love me? You're going to you're going to be carried to a place you don't want to go, which yep. history says he was crucified upside down at his own request because he didn't want to you know he wanted to have the humility to not be crucified like jesus he didn't want to be affiliated with that I, be I believe that but the last verse i always thought was interesting when john wrote jesus did many other things as well if every one of them were written down i suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written and i've made this point about a lot of things but you think, well, how come he didn't write them all down? Because it wouldn't matter. At what point do you say, I believe this? I mean, which I, I do like that the passage is in there. Because people say, well, we've read everything Jesus did. No, we got a verse that said, there's not enough room in the world to record <laughs> what he did. I'm and, 70, and why not? Because it wouldn't change it. Yeah, I'm 73 years old. At 28 when Bill Smith, a preacher, when he told me and showed me the verses on the resurrection of the dead, that is when I said, I am on the wrong side of this thing. Hmm. I'm, fixed to, I'm fixed to get on the right side of this. The resurrection, I said, how in the world? My question was, it's a dumb one, but I, I said, how in the world did I ever miss that? For some reason, 
for 28 years. Right. I never had thought about the resurrection of the dead. It was all about me. But once I heard about the resurrection of the dead, I was like, okay, I, 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 I got it now. <laughs> and I, it changed my way of operating i mean on the spot well the the passage and i've been here ever since the passage that says he blinded the minds of unbelievers talking about the evil one your eyes were finally open my eyes were open you, you find and then you saw it for the first time but it's not like it's the first time you ever heard it it's the first time you ever heard it and believed it because of where you were i didn't yeah. know immortality was hanging in the balance here exactly once you got down to that at 28 i, I have a couple of degrees i'm no dumbo but i thought good night I said, no, I got got to have that. Well, right. you start growing, and we make mistakes. I think people think that all of a sudden, you know, they got they got to be more sure, or it's more how you respond to it. You know, you you make a mistake, and you think back, and said, no, I'm I'm convinced. Jesus came back from the dead. You know, what am I doing? And you respond differently. That's why we said it's not so much what we do and and the mistakes we make it's how we respond to it in the state of our heart you know right. i mean we easily get distracted based on circumstances i've said this temptation. many times but i'll i'll continue to say it uh for our listeners you got a better story all your sins removed guaranteed to be raised from the dead constant mediating work the power of the spirit peace of mind while you're here Love God, love your neighbor. You say any other stuff? I said, no, I'd cover it. Just, just do that because of what he's done for you. And right. it, it's immortality. But, you know, but those who don't believe, they just think it seems too sim- simple to believe. Because if we, I mean, somebody walked in here and they said, well, here's the kingdom of God, the most powerful thing on the planet because we have the Holy Spirit. By the way, one of my one of my deals was when I when I was being studied with with the guy who talked about the resurrection, I said, I I don't want to be unkind here, but I said it it's it it's almost sounds too good to be true. <laughs> and he said, It's probably too good for all of us, but it is true. Yeah. That was his answer. Yeah, that's pretty thought, good. I thought, hmm. But what stood out with that wedding last night to you? I mean, well, before, well before. it's funny because I was about to say there was a lot of things, but I'll let you. One thing to me, and I never heard this before. I mean, we we Sadie grew up with us, and because we were on the show as she was a teenager, along with your kids and the rest of Willie's, you know, we watched them sort of go from kids to adults. But last night in the wedding, the guy doing the wedding said, and I, and I'm assuming it's because Sadie told him because she was not alone. He said, "You knew about." Christ as as religion until you were 17 years old was what he said last night. He said, and then you fell in love with Christ and had yeah. a relationship with love him, which was line. very powerful. Because in other words, like a lot of, and you know, Sadie was a good girl, a lot of her good kids. I mean, not perfect, but, but good, you know, in terms of what you see, their fruit. But well, it was like, I'm doing it all for the reasons I got good parents, I got a good family. But then she crossed over at 17 in her mind, I think, that's when she was like, it's more than just religion. This is like a relationship with the Lord. And, and she, she started and speaking she, boldly. Yeah, that's she, right. And she spoke last year because I asked her granddad, uh, I said, how many people did she speak to last year? And he said, 500,000. Yeah. I said, that girl spoke to 500,000 people is either last year when I asked him or a year before last Yeah, a couple of years ago. I was shocked. I yeah. Said, I said, well, man. even last night, we were looking at all the people that were there. There was the guy from uh, the Fresh Prince, you know, the guy that she oh. was competing against. He was there. I mean, all these people. I kept bumping into celebrities. <laughs> I mean, and too. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I first was probably a get a singer. picture of this person. You know, the guy that sang, he sings uh, spiritual songs. Uh, what was his name? Uh, oh, Tarn Well. Tarn, yeah. When he said his name was Torn, and I thought that's an unusual name. The only time I've ever heard that is that guy that sings spiritual music. I, I wasn't, you know, I, this is the guy. That's the guy. And Missy was like, "Oh, I love that song, Known That You Sing." And then I, I was feeling like an idiot because I thought, 
Oh, this is the guy. Uh, but you know how you meet people and you're like, I thought you'd be bigger. I thought you'd be, you know, it's just, it was, it was amazing. As much pageantry as it went on there, I'd hate to know what the bill was for that last night. <laughs> Next time we have Willie, I will ask this. If I he will tells say us. this regardless. And I mean, that poor tennis court, it, it, it got transformed into a, like a scene out of the Lion King. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I thought there were going to be animals cartoon characters so come of, out of the you know, you're, wilderness. You're not, you're not showing respect. That that was way more than a tennis court. It had a hard, well, that's where it started. It had a hard bottom, but this oh, thing had a roof with bright lights and had everything. And you going. know, he built a everything wall. Everything was good, but the sound system. Well, well I was going to get to that. Willie built a wall because I've been making jokes at him. I'm like, what are you building a wall and trying to get the rednecks to pay for it? But he built It was that a beautiful wall. So it could have... The ground could be flat, flat for that city that they created. <laughs> they called it a tent, and I said, "This is not a tent. This is like some kind of uh, going back in time." Well, you said it was like a. To me, it was like the line, the the witch in the wardrobe. I mean, when they walk through the wardrobe and they come out to Narnia, you know. Oh, that's the way I was. That's what I felt last night. I was like, I'm in Narnia. I could not I, believe I talked it. to the groom and his parents, and I said to them, "I said, well." They said, what do you think? You know, I said, well, I said, we've come a long way. I said, because when Miss Kay and I got married, it was 10 bucks for the blood test in those days to see if you had some kind of disease or whatever. And I said, and $15 to the justice of the peace, the whole thing lasted about 15 minutes, 25 bucks and and the marriage, the, the ceremony was over. I mean, did the judge do a ceremony? Huh? Did he like? He said, he said, you want her? I said, yeah. And he said, give me $15, sign right here. That was the wedding ceremony. It well, almost it's, didn't it's, even seem like it was legal, but yeah, I guess it is. It's making was, me feel real fortunate to be here. touching. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was going to say is what stood out despite all that, which I think you were right when you leaned over and, and told Mom, I think they this is a little much. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. What stood out, because they had all this there, and then the sound didn't work the first 15, 20 minutes, which was very frustrating. Which it included sure your part, Dad, because Dad was saying the prayer, the first I mean, prayer, and he had a few things I to say. I thought I was going to leave, Phil, when you were praying. Because, Phil, I realized, because I've spoken enough times to know when the mic's not working, it, there's no way to win. It's awkward because you start hollering, but people can't hear you. There was hundreds of people And if there. you start hollering, the mic kicks in, then you well, blow everybody. Well, that's what happened Phil. Phil's yeah. praying, and all of a sudden the mic kicks in. So what did he say? He said, uh, he said God works in mysterious sweat. ways whether the mic is on, but he, he was still he got, hollering. He was saying, hey, you have to speak louder because you never know when this thing is going on. Yeah. He was like having a conversation about the mic with the Almighty with us. Awkward, listening. Awkward, it was an awkward. Oh, it was hard. Yeah. I, started, I just laughing. figured, Jason I just got figured so somebody tickled. in the back over there didn't like what I say and then put the censor to me. I didn't know what was going <laughs> no, on. No, no, no. It wasn't just you. No, because then, yeah, continue. But I'll say this. And, and the mic did start working eventually. Thankfully. Better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I thought this is the most Jesus-centered wedding ceremony. And I've been to a lot of weddings. I've done a lot of weddings. That was the most Jesus-centered wedding I have ever seen. So that I was proud that she was my niece and her husband. Now, I mean, the, the things that they wrote to each other, I mean, you could tell. Yeah. They were really long, but you could tell nobody wrote that for them. I mean, yeah. how, how articulate and how inspiring were those? Both. They were exchanging their vows. I thought they were going to say, you know, I love you. You know, oh, it was like two sermons toward each other, which was or amazing two great to, poems to or me. Yeah. yeah, it was. And by just, the way, just you know, everybody's looking for ideas. I'm sure we're speaking to a lot of people that'll get married. Uh, this is something I'm, and I've done a hundred and I don't know, 120 weddings. And so I've seen a lot of things that people have done, but they did something I've never seen done at a wedding and found it very inspiring. It So when uh, the guy, what's his name, Taryn? What's the guy? Yeah, name? Tarn. Tarn. Tarn well. So when Tarn was singing, he was singing a couple of worship songs. They walked over, and you know you've seen people do a candle and do sand, and I've seen all these yeah. different things. They took communion together. And I just thought, man, yeah, that is unleavened bread. Yeah, and, that is so yeah. powerful because th what they were saying was, is this is a this is we're with God, 
You know, we say it all the time. Three, yeah. you know, three are better. Than, like but, that. And well, and the three are better. They tied the rope. Yeah. Uh, and I've they seen had that five before. strands because it had the the two individuals, Christian and Sadie. Then they had the God, Father. I mean, the Father, Father Son, the Son, the Son, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, which I thought was awesome. That's pretty interesting. But somebody leaned over and they said, you know, we, when we got married, we just got married. I didn't have anything to take home with me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what a couple told that's me. Hilarious. I did their wedding. They were like, I feel cheated. 25 years ago, you married us and we took home nothing. I said, well, you're still yeah. together. Yeah, I mean, come on, give me some credit for something. That was a good reminder, you know, to that's have great. that rope. And then both families at the end, I thought that was really powerful. They all gathered up in that circle when y'all prayed. Well, basically, well, Phil, you were in on that, I think, weren't you? No, yeah, no, no, you didn't go. So, but even us watching it, I felt like, which I'm sure was what they were, they wanted to do, was we we worship God in a worshipful moment, and most people don't think about that, unfortunately, yeah. in settings like that. And it would have been easy to get caught up in the glitz of all that because it was something. Oh, that's right. I mean, but I'm in that moment. I was moved. You know, I'm sure women, and not just women, I guess, ever people get moved by how beautiful a ceremony. I was moved just by the power of the love of Jesus from those two yeah. individuals. That, that was involved, moving to me. All involved were married to Christ. We're the bride of Christ. So all of us together, uh, Christian's family and yeah. our family, they're from Alabama. We're from over in I think North they're from Virginia. Florida. Huh? Then he say nice, Florida. nice, nice Florida. Florida. Well, I yeah, thought it, well, I didn't know where it was, but the Bible, well, he goes Alabama, to Auburn. Florida. He so goes to really, Auburn. Really, you, you can call it what you will, but really, when two people like that from two family groups marry, it, it's a marriage of everyone. Spiritually it is. speaking, yeah. it really is. Well, and you mentioned this in the duck line this morning. We were talking about that that it's you know it's a legacy of marriages. You no know, doubt. It's, it's ones that go on and on, and that was one of your challenges awesome. to them. I thought it was really good. All right, we got to go. Well, yeah, we got to go. We, uh, we we got off on a rabbit and wound up at a wedding. But that's all right. It was really good, and it sort yeah. of honors exactly what well, we're talking Well, it was about. moving. It was in, inspiring. You can't help but talk about it, you know. There's two young people. Where you find in our society two young people get up there and said, look, me and you are a byproduct of what we have in Jesus. Let's let's make it work. They did do it right. They oh, it, right. it was awesome. Yeah, it, it was definitely one I cataloged in my mind to share yep. with other people as you go along. So there's an idea for you at your wedding. Uh, man, think about worship and communion as a part of that great uh, setting, which is fantastic. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see you next time on Run the Shame. We are so glad you're watching and listening to the Unashamed podcast. Be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. That's going to keep you up to date with all the new episodes, and it's also going to let other people find out about our podcast. So keep spreading the word and watching and listening to Unashamed with Phil Robertson.